Many reviewers glossed over the fact that the iPhone XR doesn't have 3D touch, like 9 of the last 10 iPhone models had. There is, of course, a new thing called haptic touch. Many people believe it's the new future for iPhone displays, since it's cheaper to manufacture over 3D touch. Personally, I hope they're all wrong. Hey, it's Justin from Gadget Hacks, and I want to show off what I've seen lacking in other YouTube reviews online. The real difference between the iPhone XR's haptic touch and 3D touch on other iPhones. Unfortunately, the vast majority of reviewers who showed off the iPhone XR before its release date admitted that they never really used 3D touch, and they'd mostly talk about the haptic feedback on the flashlight and camera lock screen buttons, as well as the lack of quick actions on the home screen. There's a lot more to compare than just those things. First, let's go over the lock screen and get that out of the way. Something everybody talked about but didn't really go deep enough beyond, oh cool, it has haptic feedback. Yes, the iPhone XR has the same flashlight and camera buttons on the lock screen that the X, XS, and XS Max have, but the XR, you have to tap and hold the buttons, which provides haptic feedback to let you know that it worked. On the X, XS, and XS Max, you need to force press to get that feedback and open the tools. This is a huge difference because the 3D touch version could prevent you from accidentally turning on the flashlight or opening the camera. A force press is much harder to do accidentally than a long press. So I'm expecting a lot of users to have issues with their cameras and flashlights opening unwantedly all the time. Second, live wallpapers. These animated wallpapers only work with 3D touch on the lock screen, where you could force press to watch them in motion. The harder you press, the faster animation happens. There is no haptic feedback, which would probably end up being annoying anyway. Now on the iPhone XR, there's no such thing as live wallpapers. You can't long press to activate them, which is disappointing for a few reasons. There's now a weird blank space on the Choose Wallpaper menu where Live used to sit. You can't use a Live Photo as your lock screen wallpaper unless you want to see just the key photo. And you can't use GIFs anymore, which you could use by turning one into a Live Photo first. For those who really like moving wallpapers, Dynamic is all you have now. Third, the quick actions on the home screen icons and elsewhere across the system. When you force press on an icon, contact, album, or other supported item, you get some haptic feedback and a list of shortcuts would appear. If it's the Instagram app, you could jump into recent activity. On Fitbit, you can log your weight quickly. For a contact, you can send Apple Pay Cash or start a FaceTime without opening those apps first. Tap and holding on any home screen icon on the iPhone XR just brings up the home screen editor. Yes, you do feel a vibration when you do this, but I'm pretty sure that's been a thing since before 3D Touch. Overall, I'm sure there are other ways Apple can have both the editor and quick actions without 3D Touch, and Apple is supposedly working on this. Even when tap and holding on a contact, you don't get the quick action menu on the XR. I guess it's not such a big deal in terms of contacts since you can just tap and get most of the options on the next page. When in music, force pressing or tapping and holding on an album gives you the options to download, play next, and more. Albeit, one with a blurry background and one without. But the options are the same. So I hope Apple does incorporate Haptic Touch more for a full-fledged 3D Touch replacement. Fourth, we've got Peak. On 3D Touch iPhones, when you want to see more about something in one app without leaving the current app you're in, you gently force press on it so it peeks into view and gets a tiny vibration. This is good for previewing web links, viewing map previews of addresses, and more. Best of all, when you're peeking, you can swipe up to reveal quick actions you can take, many of which can be accessed by long pressing or swiping on the iPhone XR, but you don't get the benefit of seeing the link in context. Plus, it sometimes makes it faster to perform actions. For example, in mail, you can use 3D touch on an email to peek into it, trash it, move it, reply, forward, mark, etc. On the XR, you can use left and right swipe actions for the same result, but you'll have to tap an additional time for some of the options to appear. Also, sometimes there are more options when peeking with 3D Touch, such as in notes. Where the left and right swipe gestures on the iPhone XR won't let you share a note, when peek quick actions let you do just that. Overall, you can long press or swipe on the iPhone XR and get some of the same quick actions as with 3D Touch, but you don't get the benefit of previewing the link first to make sure it's right, you have less actions in some cases, and you don't get any haptic feedback. Fifth, naturally we have pop. When you peek into something with 3D Touch, you can then press down further to pop right into its appropriate app. Since there is no peek on the iPhone XR, you obviously can't pop. So you're left to just tap to open any app, then use the back to app feature if you didn't like what you see or if it's the wrong thing. Six, the trackpad. One awesome thing you could do with 3D Touch on a stock Apple keyboard in iOS 11 and lower was bring up the trackpad by 3D touching anywhere on the keyboard to more easily place cursor where it needed to be. Well, the iPhone XR has this too, as well as all other non 3D Touch iPhones running iOS 12 or higher by long pressing on the spacebar. However, there's one thing missing from iOS 12's version. You can't select text at the same time. On an iPhone with 3D Touch, after you place the cursor using the trackpad, 
You can press deeper to select a word. Press deeper again and you select the whole sentence. Press deeper a third time would highlight the whole paragraph. You could also just get the trackpad into place, depress once to select a word, then drag your finger to select the text you want. For me, it's much easier than the tap and hold on words method that the 10R employs. Now to be fair, there are a lot of things you could do on the iPhone XR without 3D Touch that you could do on other iPhones with 3D Touch. You may not get any haptic feedback, but you can at least perform the same actions. You can switch apps from the corner, you can open control center options, you can clear all notifications, you can quick reply by swiping and tapping view on the lock screen versus 3D touching. iPhotos still work by a long press instead of a 3D touch, and there's more that I haven't even gone through. Overall, the iPhone XR is a good phone for the price, but if you use 3D Touch on a daily basis, you might want to think twice about which 3D Touch features you can do without, and what the XR can do with haptic touch, before committing to upgrading. 